Wow, just like that, back with another portable clint. Guys, I've been in awe of this guy since I saw him on a Fox show a very long time ago. And I've known him, I dig him, I love him. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen W. Bailey. Hey. Look at you, look at you, look at you. Hello, everybody. Look at you, you look beautiful, dude. And I oh, know what, now you. I know why you work a lot. <laughs> it's the stash. Yeah, dude, the stash. I've been having people with stashes. This is my, this is the theme this week of stashes. It's the stash revolution. It's, it's the stash revolution. Stash okay. Russian. Stash Russian. Okay. Okay, listen. When, I'm going to get right into it. Okay. Because this is a crazy thing because, okay, when did you think about becoming an actor? Let me just get that question out of the way. Oh, I'm one of those ones who like says, I like when I was like seventh grade. Yeah, same yeah, here. Like same seventh here. grade, my older brother was uh, doing theater in the high school uh, theater program. Where? Where's home? Uh, this is in the suburbs of Seattle, Meadowdale High School. I was going to say go Chiefs. They're not the Chiefs anymore. Oh, that's right. They're, They're the not. Warriors. Like I know. Something like yeah. that. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I was uh, you know, my brother was in Greece. I remember that specifically and watching and just being like, wow, that's that's what I want to do. And from then on, that was it. Okay, so you're up in Washington, Seattle, mm -hmm. yep. right? When do you when do you do something about this itch that you have since seventh grade? Oh, well, I started doing theater in Seattle, uh, kind of straight out of high school. I skipped going to, I didn't go to undergrad in college. I went to a community college briefly. Sure. Uh, and I started doing theater in the theater community in Seattle. Um, a lot of avant-garde theater, a lot of, uh, you know, wacky down in you Capitol know, Hill. What does avant-garde mean? Uh, just out there, like more, uh, more, um, what's the word? Um, just rural? Rural? No, 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 no. More artistic, more like crazy, more like wacky. Okay. Like okay. we were doing, oh. like you know, black box theater, half naked. I got you. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. No, no. Okay. More yeah, like yeah. performance art. Right. Okay. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, so I did all that, and then I got to a point, um, kind of around the age most people my age were graduating from college, whatever that is. Kind of that same kind of age. So four years after high school. Sure. About, sure. Uh, I kind of realized I needed to get better. I was fortunate enough to work a lot for my age group. I was always the young kid in every production, you know? Yeah, and yeah. At some point, it was just like, you know, this is this is fun that I can come out and, you know, make faces and make people laugh or whatever in community theater and the small stuff, but I want to, if I want to go elsewhere, I need to get better. So I actually um, applied to grad schools, even though I hadn't gone to undergrad. Okay. And there's a small number of theater uh, programs in the country that take uh, people without undergrads who have a resume. Sure. And one of them was ACT in San Francisco, um, very proud graduate of American Conservatory Theater. Okay, And great. they let me in, they were nice enough to let me come there. So you're like a real actor. I mean, you do like real training. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I dig that, yeah. dude. I wish I would have done something like that. Yeah, no, it's a, uh, it is the core of like, what I'm all about. I'm very happy that I took the route that I took. It's not the only route. It's not the route for everybody, but I'm right. really happy that it was the route I took. Okay. Sure. So ACT graduate. Yep. And when then, do you, where do you go after that? Then I was doing theater in the Bay Area. I was actually a uh, kind of an intern company member at ACT on the main stage for a season. And then I uh, performed there a couple other times. And, and then, you know, Cal, uh, Cal Shakes, Utah Shakes, different like festivals and things like that. And <laughs> for three or four years, and then it was um, 2000. I moved to uh, California, to, okay. to Los Angeles, Hollywood. Well, 2000. Yeah. In 2000, there was a big strike. Is yeah. that correct? I showed up and started walking the line. The day, like, literally, I moved in, and within a week, I was down walking the line. I'm going to, I don't know your story, but I'm going to make, I'm going <laughs> to see if I'm right with your story, okay? okay. 2000 is a strike or 2000 well we have 2000 we have 2001 was, those were two bad years yeah. for us actors a lot for a lot of people but for us actors we had two major hits yeah so there was a re big reality show thing is that where you started before i say what it was is that where you is that well i mean started in the sense it was probably the most visible thing that i had done that anybody would like directly attach me to you know okay like, yeah, yeah i had done a bunch of little co-star stuff on will and grace and okay Becker well and then hold on then let's work up to that reality show okay so you get into town who who tells you what to do uh, when I first got to LA, I had an agent uh, that I stayed with only briefly, but I had... Uh, How did you get that agent? 
Well, see, I, I, I benefited greatly by friends, frankly. Um, Don't we all? Yeah, well, when I first moved to LA, because I had stayed in San Francisco uh, three or four longer, three or four years longer than some of my uh, co-students, uh, my, my, my fellow, they, some of them were down here already. Okay. So I was able to kind of show up in LA and, you know, I got a job waiting tables and I got an agent pretty uh, easily. How did you get I'd that also agent? Been... I want to know how you got that agent, Stephen W. Bailey. <laughs> Somebody made a call and we took a meeting and she was interested in me. A big component of it though, that is a struggle for a lot of actors, is that I had joined SAG while I was still in San Francisco because I was able to do a couple of commercials up there and a couple of feature films that came okay, through. Okay, so you I got that thing part. out of the way. So I came to LA with my card in hand, okay. which made it a lot easier. And I, I don't even know, people ask me how to get in the union. I mean, I don't even know. I, 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 I was I fortunate either. to go a route that I was blessed in that regard. Okay. What's your first gig you booked down here? When's the first time you saw your name on the call sheet? I think it was, I think it was Becker. Okay. Is it Becker? It was either Becker or Willing Grace. And that, those are great bookings. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I mean, right off the bat, those yeah. are, and, and if I'm not mistaken, they were filmed in front of a live studio yes, audience. Yes. How did you handle that? I loved it. That to me is, uh, I wish there was more multi-camera half yeah, hours. Yeah, it's I, the best. I, 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 I just love it because it's coming from theater. It, it feels like that. You yeah, know? yeah. I did mean, you get the three-day contract or the five-day contract on those first bookings? Oh, probably the three-day contract, yeah. No, three-day contract yeah. means you show up, let's just say it shoots in front of a live studio audience on Friday, you would get there on Wednesday, do run-throughs on Wednesday, run-throughs yeah, yeah, on Thursday, yeah, yeah. shoot live. It was Friday interesting night. on Becker because it was the first episode back in season four and they actually were having a bunch of the uh, series regulars were pressing for more money and there was a little bit of like there was a stall. I think we shot it a week later than initially thought because people had, so there's this weird energy on the set, yeah, you know, yeah. that was going on. And then uh, on top of that, Rio Perlman was guesting in. So the scenes with Ted Danson and Rio Perlman, and I'm like this little repairman, phone repair guy, and I have to be inserted. So they're already rehearsing a scene and they're like, oh, grab this co-star guy and throw him in really quick. So I just jump in and say my lines and then like yeah. pull me out and they keep rehearsing. Like we do. Right. And so after, then I'm just sitting over here and they finish rehearsing the scene. And then uh, that's when Ted Danson came over to me and said, oh, hi, my name's Ted, by the way which I thought was very gracious of him. I love, I love it. I love it when stars say their names because let's just, you know, you should just assume who I am. I, I don't like that. Yeah. I like it when they say their name. He was one of the nicest guys. Really? If, oh, if you have a chance to work with Ted Davis. Okay. Oh my okay. goodness. Okay. I, I, oh I won't turn goodness. it down. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. You book Will and Grace, you book Becker. Yeah. You're, you're loving life. You're thinking this is going to happen. Yeah. Then it slows down for a sec because of, we got, we got the strike. Yeah. Yeah, the writer's strike. The writer's strike. Is there anything happening, bef anything else before I get to get to it? Nothing of real note. I mean, I did some commercials and stuff as well that was sustaining me, but, you know, just kind of, yeah. Okay. You get a phone call. Well, how do you find out about this reality show that you're about to do? It was interesting. Uh, I felt, It's a little bit foggy. I, I feel like, uh, I was thinking about this this morning, there was a different guy. They had hired somebody already. Well, let's tell them what the show is. Okay. It's my favorite thing to tell people the title. Dude, I my love My big, it. fat, obnoxious fiance, where I get to describe big, fat, obnoxious sure. all in one I, sentence. I hear you. Great. That's great. And it's great because now the rest, of my career, yeah. whenever I, the rest of my career, whenever I reference the show, it always gets truncated to big fat. <laughs> when I was doing big fat, when I was doing big fat, yeah, yeah, was no, like, oh, yeah, yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. the show about <laughs> me being big and fat, I heard right, that. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, but it was a great show because it was a mock it's a mock um, reality show. Well, it's a reality show, like inside of a reality show. Correct. Kind of. But, it was a double but the act. people didn't know that it was a fake show when right. you were doing it. Is, is that correct? Correct. The people we were punking did not know we were punking them, but they thought we were in a show also being punked. Which right. Was, okay. And this listen. was at the beginning of the reality shows, so people tuned in. To this, I did. Yeah, I no, it, it was the number one show in the country, I think, or number three or something. It was right up there. Just uh, keep it at number one. No one's yeah, nobody check. Two thousand three. Like, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, number one. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> How many weeks does that show go on? Only six. Did it get canceled? No, or? no. It just was, it was six. Just... We took them from the beginning to the end in six episodes. Yeah. Tell me about your career before this and career after it, please. 
Was it because obviously the career before you only had a few bookings? Yeah, I mean the career before I was on a nice uh, little hopefully trajectory of just kind of doing what you do with the co-star stuff sure. and things. And then I kind of got this reality show thing kind of um, just kicked that out of kilter for a while yeah. in, in many ways. And some of them in positive ways, some of them in extremely negative ways. What do you, what, what's the, give me in one extremely negative way. Well, we mentioned about not to be, it sounds whatever, but we just talked about how I'm a yeah. theater actor and blah, right, blah, right. blah. I get that. And, okay. and then now every casting director in town, it seemed, no, knew me as a guy who burped and farted and that was what right. I did. Right, right. And, you know, there would be a breakdown that would come out that would damn near describe me. You know, 6'4", yeah. 280, blue eyes, brown <laughs> right. hair, you right, know. Right, 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 right. And my manager or agent would, you know, pitch me and they'd be like, oh, that, why do we know that name? Oh, well, he was on the big hub. Oh my God, that was great. We loved him. This character doesn't burp and fart. And it'd be like, well, yeah, he's a trained actor. He does. And, and oh no, we know he is. They think he's great. When we have a character that, you know, burps and farts, we'll give you a yeah, call. Yeah, yeah, you know? Okay, I can see and that. And so that okay. kind of hurt I things yeah, for a yeah. while. Okay. It took me a while to really start to, um, in fact, it, all the way until, I know we're not there yet, but we were working on Grey's Anatomy is really what rescued me from that pattern. I remember, because I mean? like, you were doing commercials during this whole time. Well, the commercials are where it benefited. Yeah. You know, oh, the commercials are where it benefited. That, so I was able to make some money and, and, and do interesting things <clears throat> commercially because people were like, oh yeah, you know, that, that had, even though they weren't, the commercials weren't specific, like, hey, that's the guy from. Yeah. They, they like to have the recognizable face and <clears throat> whatnot. You know what I like to recommend to actors if they're going through a hard time? Mm. Is to book a couple on national commercials. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. <laughs> People say, how should I make it in Hollywood? I say, first of all, you should book some national yeah, commercials. Yeah. Get a little exposure and then get a series. Yeah, it's just that I, easy. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. <laughs> I hear. Okay, so from tell me what's going on between um, my... My my obnoxious boyfriend. What's it called? I'm trying to leave the big fat out of it. <laughs> the big fat obnoxious fiance. Okay, fiance. Call it big fat. That's okay, fine. but so, no, because dude, I get it. Yeah. The big fat thing, because yeah, yeah, yeah. my parts are that. But you know yeah. what? Hollywood always like they. That's an always a go to thing, like it or not. Oh, no, no, and I, I don't have a problem with. I absolutely, I make my money doing characters. Yeah, that's yeah. how I make my living for sure. But it seemed like they were being really. I get it. No. They're bringing it all the way down. I mean, the character that you're saying I couldn't read for would be like a character I play all the time, yeah, like a yeah. bartender, or you know, he just wasn't doing something obnoxious. So they were like, oh, you know. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> well, tell me, so what's what's the year between your first booking of Grey's Anatomy? Because that's where it's that's where the the comeback starts with Grey's Anatomy. It's not a show before that because it leads to another show, but it's just that show that you are on. Oh right, I was only hired to do one show on right. Grey's. Okay, what you're yeah, yes. right. I So was, yeah. tell me the year. What what year was that? Uh, uh, two thousand five, I want to say. So what's right? so from two thousand? When did you do the fiance? Two thousand three. So it's about a year and a half or two years. I was really having a hard time. Again, commercials saved me. I'm not complaining. I wasn't, you know, but it was really nice that I mean, it was a frustrating time for me to get into the right. actual okay. film type of stuff. Do you, when you went to go audition for Grey's Anatomy, did you know anybody when you went to go audition? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who did you know? I was friends with Shonda Rhimes, so that okay. helped nicely. Give me a 30-second history of her. How did you meet her? How do you know her? A uh, good friend of mine in San Francisco, actor, uh, a couple, uh, who I was friends with. The female of that couple went to school. Actually, they all went to school with Shonda at Dartmouth. And I believe Vicky and Shonda were roommates at one time, okay, and they okay. were all friends. And so I actually wrote a script, and I gave it to my buddy Chad, who's the guy in that relationship. And just, he's another actor, and I just wanted to read it. And he's like, oh, that's great, but I don't know anything about it, uh, writing or anything. Why don't I send it down to my friend who's in Hollywood, who's a script reader. At that time, Shonda was uh, reading scripts for, you know, whatever, Paramount or something. And he gave it to her, and she, you know, liked it uh, enough to want to uh, give me some notes on it and help me. That's and we awesome. kind of did some writing back and forth uh, in that way. So it was actually, I interacted with her a good deal uh, via email before I even met her. 
And then uh, Chad and Vicky actually moved to Hollywood for a while, to LA, actually Pasadena. And so we were all down here together, and then that's when we became better friends. They subsequently moved back out of town, but then that's, that's how that started. Okay, one last thing about her. So let's go into that first audition. How did you get the audition? You, were, you got an audition for a one, one day? Well, no. See, what, so what happened is in the pilot, uh, they asked me, she asked me to come down and, and audition for a character who died in the pilot. Okay. Uh, and That's never a good sign. <laughs> well, <laughs> also you have to remember, like, you know, you're dicking a pilot. No, nobody necessarily thinks it's going to go anywhere. Right, right, right. I mean, they right. Don't, you don't know that it's going to be this juggernaut. So it's like, oh, I'm just doing a pilot. It might be all it is. Why don't I have my friend come down and read and see if they like him for this role? And uh, so I came in and wrote for this guy who died in the pilot, and they offered me the gig which was, uh, and it was a nice, perfect role for me. I had, I gave a very good audition. Okay, I probably great, do say great. Somebody saw. They offered me the role, uh, but that was, I just said, of all that time, I didn't get any traction at all. There was one little second of traction right at the same time that they offered that thing where Fox had me come in and read for one pilot that was happening. And, and Fox was the network that put your reality show on. Was there a connection from that? They, they knew you and they- Kind of, okay, yeah. Okay. I don't feel like it was that, strong because different people were okay. in charge at yeah, that point okay, okay. um but anyway uh so i kind of was like i can't do this because we're in the pilot so i was getting callbacks with this pilot thing and, and whatever and i ended up testing so i was at that time i had to say no right okay and then say no to which part to the dying on the gray's anatomy okay. pilot got it got it but i've made a good impression okay and so then the show gets picked up and then, and this is something a lot of people don't know, a little Grey's Anatomy insider All information. Right, let me hear it. I actually played a different role than Joe the bartender for six episodes in the first season. Wow. I played anesthesiologist Jeremy. Okay. And I would just say like, pressure's dropping, or I'm pushing some drug I can't pronounce, <laughs> you know, through the vein, pushing the thing, you know. And uh, they hadn't aired any of it yet. And before any of that aired, maybe there's like one episode where the anesthesiologist, anesthesiologist was in it, but I'm always wearing the mask. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, and okay. so you can see my eyes. But I, by the time they did, came up with the idea for Joe and said that they wanted me to play Joe, they hadn't aired many of these anesthesiologist episodes. So they went back and kind of cut them around a little bit. Oh, really? Because they weren't really much of appearances anyway. They were yeah. co-star. They were just saying, you know, like I say, pressure's dropping. And I think they even revoiced one. But if you're a, an astute watcher, there's six episodes of Anesthesiologist. Awesome, awesome. That's awesome. Okay. And then Joe showed up in the first. In the first season, was only nine episodes. It was a mid-season replacement. Again, they didn't know what they were going to go anywhere. And then Joe showed up uh, first episode, second season. How did you? How did they figure out? Let's give you a part that has some meat on it, which you become the bartender. Well, I mean, it was a combination of uh, Shonda and then also I, I feel like that, that first thing where they wanted me to play this other role, which was a juicy role in the pilot, you know, Yeah. Um, that I wasn't able to, that kind of felt like, oh, I mean, they really wanted, you know. So I don't know who was in charge of, I mean, I'm sure Shonda had a major influence, but it, you know, other. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, you did, you ended up, by booking one episode, you ended up doing 33 episodes? Correct, something like that. That's pretty dang good. Oh, no, I was very, it was very grateful. Okay, so you do 33 episodes of that, yep. and then there's a spinoff for a second? Private well, no, that, practice? I mean, or? they did, uh, private practice came off of that, yeah. But didn't your character? I just did one uh, crossover episode. I know, but that's always cool in Oh, it book. was fun. Yeah, no, it was great. It was great. And I got a, you know, that's when I had the cast of uh, some of the people I didn't know, uh, from private practice, even though they're kind of around. I got yeah. to work with them and stuff. Okay, so. that's awesome. Yeah. Now, you do 33 episodes. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking that you're you're set? This is your career is on track? This is, it's all going smoothly? What's What are you thinking at this time? I wouldn't say on track. Uh, you know, you always want more traction. Yeah, I, you know? <laughs> no, I, trust me, I know that. I kind of felt like in some regards, uh, I was sort of not trapped in the show. I don't want to make it sound like a bad thing, but like from a casting standpoint and stuff, I was associated enough with that show that I was getting some feedback from my manager and stuff that some other shows weren't necessarily interested in having me come in and guest star because they don't want you thinking about Joe on Grey's Anatomy when you're trying to watch CSI, you know yeah, what I mean? And so there was some of that and but the yeah, it wasn't. I'm sorry, very I didn't grateful, mean to cut though. you off. I'm still very grateful. Well, yeah, you have to be. <laughs> I'll just never forget, somebody <laughs> told me this about Hollywood. In order to make it, 
you have to be known for something at first. So you being known, oh yeah, he's uh, yeah Bailey, yeah he's the he's the bartender on on uh, on, on, on Grey's Anatomy. You're known as something. Right. Somebody can refer to you, and people will know who you're talking about. Yeah, that's how. That's how you make it in Hollywood by starting off. So I hear. So I hear too. I don't know anything, but somebody told me that, and I find it to be true. You start, the first big thing is being known for something. I, I I agree with that. It's been interesting. My career has been interesting in that I don't feel like I was, I've ever really uh, hit a thing that like I'm known known like known why. But, you know, I had the big fat thing, which then ended me up on Letterman. I think you're the only one to keep talking to saying big and fat. I have to say it, right? That's, I'm so, <laughs> it's in the habit of saying it now. But, like, you have these things where people go like, oh, you're the next big, oh, you're the next John Goodman, you're the next blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, it just doesn't happen. The right thing isn't there, the right role. And then you end up, uh, for me anyway, end up going very down in a valley where things didn't really happen again. And then there's kind of like, oh, then Grays. And again, didn't, not, not like I was hitting it wide on that because minor character, but you would think there'd be something there. No, not really. And, you know, you yeah, yeah, know, no, I know, get it. Just, you kind of just stay in the trenches until something really hits. Now, Steven, the thing about you, here's the great thing about you. Oh. Is that you're just like, you're like a prime A, prime beef. Like, you're just going to get better and better over time. Uh, being a character actor. Oh, yeah, and I always felt like I, the joke with me is I've been told since I was in high school that I'm going to work a lot when I turn 50. And yeah. I'm 48 now. Oh, yeah, so it's happening. It's, it's going to happen. Okay, I always hate referring to people to uh, somebody else, but do you, you ever get that you're a young version of the father from Arthur? Father from Arthur? Yes. Remember Arthur with Dudley Moore? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying the to father, the uh, father, Liza Minnelli's dad. Ah. Yeah, he wore the big black glasses. I wish I knew this guy's name. <laughs> I'm going like to send you a picture. I feel, like, me on the spot. I feel like I've sent you a picture of him before, of this character actor. He was great, great, great. Oh, I know who he is. Seinfeld's dad. Oh. I think it's Seinfeld's dad. You're talking about, is that really? Yeah. But at a younger age, he had the black hair. He I feel like this is, like if anybody comments yeah. at all on this, it's going to be about this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, if, yeah, if they watch. Okay. If they make it this far. <laughs> if they make it this far. Okay. So, I'll send you a picture again. Oh, yeah. I get, it. all the time I get recognized as him. Constantly. Uh, no, I know. I can tell. I can tell. Yeah, just yeah. edit out yeah. the middle. Right. Okay. So, after the show, well, the show doesn't even come to an end. Grace? Yeah. It's never going to end. It's never going to end. It's never going to end. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to ask a very, like, precise question. I don't want right. to get around anything else. I just want to ask this one question, and then we'll get out of this. Okay. Why aren't you still the bartender now? Well, it's not a short answer. I know. I'm afraid. <laughs> it comes down to... We don't have to get... I, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, I, no. I don't want to get into that at all. I just want to know... When that came to an end, I, I, we don't even know. I don't even know. Need to know the answer. I just want to know about your next step after that show for you comes to an end. Well, it's interesting because people um, always assume, and maybe even rightly, maybe I'm in the wrong, but people always are kind of like, "How would you ever leave that gig?" You know, and, and it sounds um, vain in many ways. This isn't why I left it, but the end result was that I kind of was glad to remove myself from a situation where most of the time I just was doing one or two lines and, and very repetitively, you know, every episode was here's your beer, here. every once in a while they would write me something very nice, but most of the time it was that. And, you know if they're um, hiring for this part right now? <laughs> Again, I just, there's, there's part of me that just kind of goes yeah. like, well, that's not why I came here. And if I can't, if I if I don't get a better gig than that, then maybe we can all look back at my career and laugh at it. Maybe people already are, you know. I don't think but, so. But uh, I, you know, just for me, it was just uh, that's not why I went. The reason I left had a lot to do with economics and different things. And Again, I don't. It, really... I know it doesn't matter though. I don't mind talking about uh, part of it. Right. Um, it's just that the show needed to cut budget related to the economic crisis. Sure, ironically. sure, sure. And. Um, you know, at the same time, they had just given all the leads very large amounts raises. You know, okay. so some of that. I got you. I got you. Okay. Out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. That. So you put that to the side. Mm hmm And you're moving forward. Is that is the is the past still like leaning on your shoulders a little bit? 
Well, By the way, after this, I'm done with this whole Grey's Anatomy. That's my last question. Okay. On to the next subject. No, I, I don't think it. It, it doesn't. Um, no negative comes from it. Okay. You know, people are always. It definitely helps me in rooms. You know, and when I say rooms, like auditions, that's uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 industry yeah. slang. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it helps me in auditions and stuff. And people seem to have respect for me. And there, there is uh, a great thing too about when you do 33 episodes of uh, a, a certain show that's that successful. You're going to have. <laughs> A lot of big name quality directors come through there who then go on to do other yeah, things. Yeah. And so it is nice to be able to enter a room occasionally when a director's there occasionally and, and, and have it be somebody you've worked with before and stuff. And it doesn't always result in a job, but sometimes it does. And, you know. All right, Stephen, how many times have you thought about quitting this business? Well, it's already <laughs> 11 a.m., so. You take but four like times really, this morning. But like really <laughs> quitting, really throwing in the towel. Many times. Uh, in fact, I think it's one of the best things I've ever thought about and not done. Yeah, sure. In a weird here. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I was thinking about this the other day. I think that it's uh, me finally getting to a point where I was ready to throw in the towel made me stop putting so much pressure and weight on every audition that I went to and things like that. And I just got a much more... Um, uh, Winnie the Pooh attitude or yeah. a fuck it attitude. So yeah, sure, saying? sure. Here's what I got for you. Mm. I have talked to you, with you, several times in waiting rooms. I have seen you at lo some of your lowest times. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you at some of your better times. But there has been a time or two where we talked about how crappy of a business this is. Mm -hmm. And we talked about dry spells. And then... I specifically go home a few months later and I start seeing you pop up again on commercials. It's this business, I'm, I'm describing a business that everyone yeah. who's going to be watching knows, but right, it, it's right, ebbs right, and right, flows yeah. like no other. Yeah, I, it's, there's no, there's no predictability whatsoever. I feel like even with what I just said about directors and stuff, there's very little like getting credit for the thing you did last yeah, week for yeah, what you do yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, most of the time, it's just utter chaos, and your bank account just goes like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's it's a whole. You end up living an entirely different kind of counterculture way to look at things because your way you look at economics get skewed. The way you look at debt gets yeah, skewed. Yeah, it, yeah, it's just no, a, I know. It's weird. Well, but I really have enjoyed your commercials that you've booked over the last few oh, years a you. lot. You've, you've, had, you've booked some good ones. I, yeah, loved yeah, your, yeah. I liked your um, Fruit of a Loom when you're in the van. Oh, that was great. That's a good one. You're, yeah, you're, right great. now, you got one on an airplane. Yeah, Hotels.com. Hotels.com. But you always stand out, man, on your stuff. So well, that's I'm, always I'm, a good I'm enormous. And well, it's always like that. It's, I guess because I know you're an awesome dude, and I and I, it, and it literally makes me happy when I see you specifically on TV. Oh, I feel the same way about you, man. There's there's a certain you know uh, brotherhood that that has been wonderful uh, in this industry with you and others. That uh, that that to me. It, it, Without even, oh gosh, sounds so cheesy, but like that keeps you in the game it as really much does, as man. anything else. The ability to commiserate with other people and, and be able to talk out the business and know you're not alone and know that this crazy shit that's happening is not only happening to you. Uh, I'm very grateful for people like you and, and I can name a bunch who are hopefully maybe watching all the way to the end. So I'm gonna name a bunch. Right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, love, I love our... Our, our friends at these auditions. Yeah. I, the thing is, here's the last thing I'm gonna say about this. I don't even think I have. I don't even know our friends anymore who are who even brag anymore. There's really nothing to brag about. Mm -mm. But there's never bragging like, well, yeah, I booked this. I booked. This. I mean, out of our friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're all like, we're all in it together, man. Yeah. Well, that's why I always tell people. People think there's a lot of like animosity because of things I've seen on TV shows where people play actors or yeah, know. yeah. But like when you get to a certain place in your career, maybe it has to do with age. I don't know, but you start to, you know, like we go out on stuff all the time for the same roles. Yeah. And when I see that he's booked it and I haven't, I don't sit there and go like I could have done it better. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Damn it. Yeah. It's like oh, right on, man. Yeah, same here, man. And that's easier to do when you have something running too. Yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. But I'm, you know, I look at Eric Stone Street's a perfect example. Like there was a time that I would sit on a bench with Eric Stone Street here, and talk Dad. about how we're hoping one of us books yes. the Pepsi, yes. Pepsi commercial, you yes. know, and then yes. now he's, and I don't sit there and go like, you know, now he like, owns the Kansas City Royals. Yeah, he, does he? It. yeah he, owns, he owns a part of it. Now. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
What a crazy <laughs> industry this is. It really is. is. Well, one, know, ten years right? ago, he was waiting in line with us. Yeah, now yeah, he yeah. owns a piece of the Kansas City Royals. <laughs> right. Ten years ago, he was like, oh, I'm not going to book this. Yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I'd be like, yeah, I booked it. I'm better than him. I'm like, what? He booked what? <laughs> Tell me a but, piece. Uh, Go ahead. No, finish one. Uh, I was just going to say, I always tell people that all you can do in this industry is be as good as you can be. Yeah, you know? man. And I tell people, like, I, I feel like if you feel like you're, you, you've are you done the work and you put in the time to confidently say that you're kind of where you need to be, you know, then there's nothing more you can do. The role that comes along. Yeah, Eric Stone's is a perfect example. Yeah, yeah. Did I read for that role? No, I read for Ty Burrell's role on that Did you? Show. Yes. You know, like, well, how weird, you know, yeah. like, you know. Yeah, we... And so, I don't know what Stone Street had going, I don't know, but. Uh, By the way, I think they saw like 500 people before they finally got to him, yeah. too. So he was like on and the he'd last. he worked for those producers before, yeah, too. Yeah, it was so, something crazy. Yeah. And they finally got to him, and then he booked it. And I don't even think mine was a real audition. I think really? mine was just a leverage thing to try to get Ty Brill to take less money. I believe it. <laughs> they, they do do like, that. Yeah, I know they do. They do do that. There was a bunch of guys like me there. Anyway. Any advice that's gotten you through the hard times? <laughs> please, please tell me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> please. Well, I take two different antidepressants. <laughs> <laughs> and I supplement. <laughs> That's funny, man. Um, no, I mean... Uh, yeah, but just something that, you know, like, whenever I'm down, I just keep hearing this saying, just keep moving forward. Yeah. It's just something so little and so simple... But it really, that's what we have to do. Just keep moving forward. Right. Even when we, that phone's not ringing, no new messages, nothing's happening. You've got to act like business as usual and like it's going to happen. And that literally helps me out yeah. a lot. I think the thing that helps me most out, and I don't necessarily would encourage this for everybody. I just know it works for me. But I am very, very disengaged from the business. I don't think about it at all, ever, during the day. I try not to. I try to think about other things I'm doing creatively. Like what? Like what would you think about besides? Like I, well, I do some good, woodworking. Okay, you know? that's a good question. Go. I always, I've been wanting to start asking people their hobby to help them get their mind off of it. Right. Like lately, I got this big parking lot. I got, I got this big uh, driveway, and mm -hmm. I sweep it. I love to sweep there you it. Go. And for some reason, it really helps me think, man. Yeah. What is that? Um, I mentioned Winnie the Pooh. There was a book I read a long time ago called The Tao of Pooh. It explains Taoism through Winnie the Pooh and Winnie the Pooh through Taoism. Yeah, yeah, I've and, seen this and book. And it often pops into my head that uh, I always just think of Winnie the Pooh. I don't usually think of the book. I just realize the connection. But uh, I was just like, you know, you just kind of like, you know, just go about your day, man. You, yeah. You know, I watch TV. I, I enjoy sports. I don't think about the industry very much. Uh, like I say, I'm usually surprised when I walk into a room and it's a director. I because I, I don't know, Same you know, yeah, I don't yeah. know that they are the ones. I didn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't go to parties. I don't smooth, and and I benefit greatly by. And I, I I get some people feel like they need to do that more because I benefit greatly by having some good representation, and I feel like I can be a little bit disengaged, you know, because I I get whatever some auditions here and there, you know, but. To me, it's invaluable. If I'm sitting around thinking, of, oh my God, it's Delete Real. Hey, this is a, we have to do a cameo. Come here, come here, it's come here. It's another here. ACT grad. You may recognize him from the, uh, uh, what's the name of the movie again? Uh, I was in a movie called Aviator. Aviator? Aviator? No, no, I thought the Avenator. The Avenator. 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 The, 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 the Revenator. The Revenator. The Revenator. <laughs> <laughs> the Revenator. <laughs> I Avatar. Your house. I your house. Avatar. It's Delete from Avatar. Hey, let's do good to see you, man. So proud of you. So good to see you. Oh, thanks, man. Look at this. You're, you're this crashing is a real Hollywood my podcast moment right interview right now. Well, let me just tell you. Please, go ahead. I, this guy was an inspiration to us when we went to school because when we were young, I didn't really know if you'd ever be able to work in the business. This guy was working. And we're like, oh my God, it actually works. Yeah. <laughs> you can go to school and actually get a job. No, no, not if you, you know, like, if you can get a job, it's possible because obviously someone went here and got work. Thanks, man. It's good to see you, man. Thank you. Good, good to see you. That was nice a very you, Hollywood moment right there. Clint, this is Clint. my buddy Clint. No, nice to meet you, buddy. You should check comments. out his podcast. It's called Portable Clint. I bet you would love to have you on. You seem, yeah. you seem very mobile. Uh, very, very, very portable. <laughs> okay, here we go. Very Hollywood moment right there. Okay, I love those moments. That's yeah. the reason why I never tell people to turn their phone. I want everything to happen naturally. Oh, I so I love that off. stuff. No, we we'll don't. <laughs> okay, where were we? I was talking about some crap about okay, disengaging. That's right. Disengaging. Okay. 
But I mean, it's just like, I just don't feel like you need to fret about it. You yeah, know, there's no. only so much you can do. It just falls back to what I was saying earlier. If you just feel like you're prepared and you're doing the work. Yeah, that, why Why do you need to know? I just, it confuses me all the time when people tell me about, oh, you know, this guy's got a new, you know. It's like, if you don't know him personally, why do you care? Yeah, no, you're why right about that. Why do you need that. to read that? I mean, it doesn't apply unless you're out there. I mean, I'm not trying to create content. So I guess maybe if I was. I, maybe, I, I, but I highly recommend you start doing that. I know you don't want content? to. Yeah, creating content. Really quick, who was the dude who just came by? Dalip? Yeah, who's he Dalip? He plays the scientist guy on the, uh, the av uh, I always say it wrong, av Avatar. The big movie, that big James Cameron movie I know, I've thing. never heard of it. The one that maybe has a part two, <laughs> three, and four, and five coming Yes, out, of say? which he is also in. Are you serious? Yes, so he's an ACT grad. He went to AC American Conservatory Theater. Uh, okay. He was the class uh, after me. Um, but yeah, great. So guy. that guy, he basically has his whole career just mapped out by doing these movies because they take forever to film. Uh, yeah. And by the way, this is the last question about him because we're talking about you. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about because that those movies always fascinate me because they made one film like many years ago, yeah. and all they talk about is part two, three, four, and five coming well, out. Taking it forever, right? Yeah. To do it. So um, that's just blows but it took, my mind. It took like James Cameron like a decade to write the script yeah, or something. It's crazy. Um, Really quick, we're going to start winding down. Okay. Tell me this. Tell me your favorite booking that you've ever booked, and don't say the ones we've already talked about, unless it is. Honestly, it's probably the last thing I did. I don't know if it's just because it's the last thing sure, I did or sure. because I got to cut a guy's finger off, but I think that that's probably my favorite recently. Okay. I did an episode of uh, the TV show You on Netflix. Yeah, dude. This, a lot of people have been talking about this yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a... And yeah. uh, it was a lot of fun to get to, like, you know, cut pen bag, bagels. Well, what do you say? It's not true. <laughs> pen. He's my buddy, Pen. Uh, to cut his finger off was a lot of fun. And then... Uh, he got to kill me later. It's just a lot of that actory, like that stuff you think about when you were a yeah, kid. Like, yeah, yeah. Bang, bang. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, you know, no, like that's you get fun get stuff. Yeah, and dude. You, get, oh, oh, you know, yes. like you get to do the stuff, yes. and it's like fun. Yeah. Okay. Worst day on a set. Wow, I haven't had a lot of bad days on sets. Probably uh, way back on Nash Bridges. Really? Yeah. Why? Well, I, I, love, see, I love Francisco. what you're saying right now. Why? Why? <laughs> because it was just super disorganized and just oh. nonsense and cocaine fueled. Really? Not me. Uh, the, it was sure, just, sure, not, sure. You get together a bunch of Bay Area theater actors and each of them tell their story about that it, without them getting in trouble in the industry. But it, it was just nonsense. It okay. Was just chaos. I, I want to find out more about that. Well, later. my favorite part, my best little example of the chaos is like I had this, I played this character that was kind of like uh, Lenny of Mice and Men. Sure, of guy, sure. You know, and there was this whole scene where I was supposed to be standing at this place and counting the lights on the Bay Bridge. Okay. Right? And uh, they cut it entirely. Right. And it didn't tell me. You know, and sure, I show sure, up, and this sure. is the third day in a row I've come to set, and they're not going to use me because they just are so whatever. But that's you know? great for you because you're getting right. paid. Yeah, and uh, and then I get the script that day, and I'm going through the the new colored sides, and I see that the scene is cut, right? And to show you like how connected everything is on that show, then I immediately get called to lunch. So I'm in standing in line in lunch, and I notice that the director is standing next to me, and so I casually go, so they cut that scene with the bridge and the lights. And I expect him to go like, yeah, there was some time issues because this other thing's running and we got to, and his response was, oh, they cut that? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The director. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, all right. Yeah, so, so that was okay. a paycheck to him then. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah he was. So he was just yelling, cut in there. Was there ever a day on a set where you just couldn't remember your lines and you're like, oh, that, I'm talking about that type yeah. of freak oh, out. Like, oh, oh my oh, God, I don't know oh, how I'm going to get yeah. out of this. Everybody's looking at you. No, no, no. I had a, oh, yeah. I had a rough period of my life personally uh, happening that was a pretty rough time for me. And I had, uh, they brought me into work on Scandal. No, on, yeah, on Scandal. I played a medical examiner. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask this one personal question. You yeah. just say yes or no, you don't have to go into it. Was this when you were having a jaw issue? No, this is more related to my divorce. Okay, okay. I'm I had a sorry. rough time with I, the divorce. Okay. But I remember you having a jaw. Well, like, that was pain, all related. Dude, and I, I felt had, uh... for you, dude. I always felt <laughs> bad for you because the pain, you, I could see your pain. Yeah, I know. I still have jaw issues. No, I had a surgery on my mouth. Okay. And shortly thereafter, my marriage fell apart. Okay. This is all fantastic stuff. Fantastic. But I was going through a rough And I said, don't get personal. <laughs> and go ahead. <laughs> the, 
point is, I was not in a state sure. that I, I mean, I was grateful to be offered a, a job, and in fact, it was through the Shonda world, so it yeah. wasn't like an intense audition process or something. They just said, you know, come do this thing. And, uh, and boy, I don't know if you ever watched Scandal. Do you work on Scandal at all? No, man. Yeah, they, they, they had this thing called Scandal Picks, where they expected everybody to talk super fast. Like, go back and watch that show. The, the series regs, uh, they get to slow down for important bits, yeah, you know? Like, yeah. they get to slow down and do their thing. But any other time, man, it was like, can you talk faster? Talk faster, talk to everybody, wow. you know? okay. And I had a whole mouthful of medical jargon, which has never been You're my strength. You're already freaking me out right oh, now, dude. Oh, man. And it was, it was rough. And um, I was not in a good space. We were shooting downtown in this, in this hotel. Uh, place and it was hot and I was sweaty and I had to wear a jacket and I was stressed out with the, all yeah, my personal yeah, stuff yeah. and I just started to sweat profusely my back was sore I was, I was wearing a, a back zapper like a tens unit yeah, in between tanks yeah. so, it was just, so it was just a bad day those are all my excuses okay, okay. but I was uh, I was rough it actually came to a point the director who was really great I can't remember his name but he was really nice uh, he came up to me for like the third time to ask me if I could speak faster. Oh, man. And I said to him, I looked dead in the eye and I said, I can either get the words right <laughs> or I can speak fast. I'll come close on the words. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be fine. I can do it. But if you want me to hit the words right, no. That's just where I'm at right now. And he just kind of laughed. He's like, dig your best. And, you know, and, uh, but it's, um, it's not good. But you, you got through it. it, though. I got through it. And the editors helped me a lot make it look a little better. But, uh, yeah, that was a, that was a rough day. Bailey, is there anything else I need to know about you? By the way, I've always loved your name. I told you that the other day because I'm a fan of, of uh, what's that? What's that classic show? Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey. Once upon a not once upon Bill, a time. Won't you, know, you come home, Bill no, Bailey? No, the movie, dude, with Jimmy I know Stewart. What, you're trying to what say. is it? It's a wonderful life. Thank you. <laughs> so I've always loved your name for that. My grandfather's name was William Bailey, Bill Bailey. Really? Rebecca Bill Bailey, yeah. Won't you come home? Which is different. That's George yeah. Bailey. And George the Bailey. Part, but there's a song, Bill, Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? And is my there... father's name, if people ask me why there's a W in my name professionally, my father's name is Larry William Bailey, and I'm Stephen William Bailey. And there was already a Steve Bailey in the union when I joined. Yeah, I saw. That's yeah. why you're Steve W. Bailey. Yeah. All right. Last last major question. Mm -hmm. What do you want to accomplish in Hollywood now? All I've ever wanted is to and be... Don't a, say continue working, please. Nope, I'm not. All I've, honestly, the thing that I think is the best job for guys like you and I, yeah. who are character guys and are not often going to be number one in a call sure, sheet. Sure, sure, sure. All I've ever asked for is number five or six I on a call it. sheet. I'm fine with that. And I would love to do a show that, I mean, obviously being the number one big Grey's Anatomy type show would be wonderful financially and everything else, but I've seen what that looks like and the stress it puts on the lead actors and stuff. And I just think, you know, the one I always go back to, this is strange, I always think about the show Psych. Okay. Remember the show yeah, Psych? Yeah, 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 they yeah. They shot in like Canada. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then like their, their exteriors were in Santa Barbara, yeah, you know. Yeah. Everybody seemed like they were a fun time. Yeah. They made decent money an episode, yeah. not colossal money an episode. They were recognizable and probably had a fan base without being like you can't walk anywhere. Right, exactly. You know? Yep. That to me, like just right in Dang, there. That does right sound in that good, dude. That does sound like Yeah, I like that, man. Burn notice. You yes, know, shooting yes. Miami. Yes. <laughs> number six on the call sheet. So you want a USA Network show. Is that what you're telling me? I think it'd be great. Okay. I think it'd be great. All I right. mean, unless somebody wants me I to do like, that's gonna happen. I believe that's going to happen. I believe, I really feel that that's going to happen. I feel like that's you. where I'm at. Well, that's know? what's going to happen to you. <laughs> Bailey, anything else I need to know about you before I shut it down? Nothing more than that. This has been a pleasure. Well, it's been my full pleasure. But here's one last thing I need you to do. Mm. Will you look in that camera and yeah. tell everybody bye? Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you and goodbye.